A woman dies after her fire crews pulled her from a burning home. How her family tried to help her before firefighters arrived. And later, the COVID-19 pandemic, leaving some people in San Antonio without a job. How a virtual career fair is giving them hope. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. The family of a woman who was killed in a fire suspects that a space heater might be to blame. This is happening overnight. The woman became trapped at her home in the 700 block of Runnels, not far from Walters and Interstate 35. Katrina Weber reports a second family's home was also damaged here. Well, it may look like they have gotten the upper hand on this fire. This was a battle San Antonio firefighters couldn't win. The smoke and flames they found around two this morning in the 700 block of Runnels already had done deadly damage. Firefighters went in and pulled a woman, identified a 68-year-old Maria Trevino, out of the burning home. But it was too late. She died. Her son and a man in an unattached backyard apartment were able to get out of harm's way on their own. Relatives told me that the woman's son had tried to go in there himself to save her. They say he told them that he was outside when he heard a popping noise, noticed the fire, and then could hear his mother calling for help. The fire also did damage to the home next door. A family there got out safely but was displaced. Provino's relatives say they believe a space heater in use in a different room may have played a role in the fire, which then trapped her in her bedroom. Fire investigators so far have not released the official cause of the fire. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Police investigating after a robbery just outside of a San Antonio landmark were told the suspect stole the victim's car. Take a look at your screen. Officers are looking for these people. Now they tell us the suspects walked up to the victim, showed him a gun, and then told him to give him their key, his keys and his personal property. It happened in broad daylight back on March 2nd. Officer said the suspects got away with the victim's car. If you recognize the people in the photos, you're asked to call 210-224-STOP Crime Stoppers. She claims she's the victim of a good old boy system, but others are saying that ex-constable Michelle Barrientes Vela abused her authority and her power. Allegations uncovered by the case at 12 defenders. That is the topic of a one hour special called Downfall. It will air this Thursday at 9 p.m. For nearly three years, investigative reporter Dylan Collier revealed problem after problem at Precinct 2, finally leading to a law enforcement investigation and criminal charges filed against the controversial constable. Do you regret your treatment of Leo Moreno and Chris De La Serta? They are named in the indictments. The yellow journalism that has been trade out here against me is get with this individual standing right here today. He has alleged lots of allegations Even against after your me. Indictment, you're still throw yes, that out I am. Wow. Yes. Okay. And so if anybody should be apologizing to the community, it's Mr. Dylan Collar, it is you. Okay. You will learn how it all happened along with previously unseen exclusive video. In this case at 12 special program, it's called Downfall and it's tomorrow at 9 p.m. SeaWorld hiring for both the Marine Life Park and its water park. SeaWorld is looking to fill both part time and seasonal positions. Some of the jobs include park operations, merchandise, food service, lifeguards and maintenance for a limited time. Some hiring positions come with a $200 signing bonus. If you're interested, you can apply today at www.seaworldjobs.com. And options and opportunity. The Brooks Virtual Job Fair is happening now, and organizers hope people will take advantage of the event. Right now, there are over 1,400 job listings and dozens of employers looking to hire. Stephen Cavasso shows us how the event aims to get people back to work. The COVID-19 pandemic led to a year of setbacks. Countless people were impacted, especially on the work front. It affected all the different sectors uh, in our economy. Adrian Lopez is the CEO here at Workforce Solutions Alamo. He says it's been a tough time for many, especially in our community. Lopez says 350,000 jobs were lost as a direct result of the pandemic. The reality is it's not going to come, come back automatically. But Lopez says the light at the end of the tunnel is starting to look brighter. Today kicked off the Brooks Virtual Job Fair, a collaborative effort between Brooks, SA Works, Goodwill SA, and Workforce Solutions Alamo. An event that brought employers and job seekers together in one place and online. Lopez says they wanted to make sure everyone in the community would be able to join. 
Workforce Solutions Alamo is helping with that digital divide here at this location off Blue Mel Drive. They set up stations just like this where people can access the virtual job fair and not just that, they're making it COVID safe. Lopez tells us CDC guidelines are followed at all five of their locations. Stations are social distance and sanitized after each use, and temperatures are checked right at the door. When staff, you know, does does a really great job of ensuring that those those uh, protocols are adhered to. Right now, there are still over 1,400 job listings, and over 500 people have signed up. Lopez says now is the time. We want to uh, encourage people to take advantage of opportunities like this so that they can have options, to, so they can start to figure out what is their next step in their career move. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Now to the coronavirus crisis in Bear County, the seven day average dropping to 168 cases per 24 hours. However, during the last update, health officials did say that two more people died after getting diagnosed with COVID-19. Meanwhile, inside our hospitals, we're seeing some improvements there. Right now, 182 COVID-19 patients are being treated, 72 are in the intensive care unit, and 40 patients are on ventilators. And there is some more good news in the race to vaccinate. The White House announcing it'll be able to distribute millions of additional doses of the vaccine this week as compared to last week. Even with vaccination efforts ramping up, though, ABC's Rena Roy reports that health experts are still concerned about a possible new wave. More vaccine for more Americans. That's what the White House is promising, saying it will distribute over 27 million vaccine doses this week, 5 million more than last week. This means that in the 62 days since taking office, we've more than tripled vaccine output from 8.6 million doses to 27 million doses per week. Welcome news as at least 16 states have seen case averages increase by some 10% over the last seven days. Dr. Ashish Jha of Brown University on CNN. Yeah, I think we may see a bump in cases still. We've been at 50,000, we're creeping up. Uh, I'm worried that we're gonna see a mini surge. States beginning to reopen despite warnings from health officials that it's too soon. And as so many are still facing the virus head on, some so-called long haulers dealing with symptoms for months. I was having like shivers. I was sweating a lot. Um, with that, I was tired. My body was extremely tired. 32 year old Mary Alice Santiago went 66 days without a sense of smell or taste, but says after her first dose of the vaccine. Within 24 to 48 hours, I regained my senses again. I feel like my body's a little bit more energized. A medical mystery with many reporting relief after getting their shots. Right now, doctors are still trying to understand if and how a vaccine might help, but they have some theories. The vaccine induces very good immune responses against the virus that can clean up any residual or leftover virus. The CDC says more than 83 million Americans have had at least one shot. That's over 32% of adults, and that number is expected to keep going up with more than half of states announcing plans to green light the vaccine for anyone 16 and older. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And here we go again, showers and storms possible tonight, some of which could be strong. We've got the latest update coming up. Had a big game for the women of Baylor. They are headed to the Sweet 16. Blair Ramirez with the highlights coming up in sports. After the back-to-back -back acts of gun violence grabbing the headlines, lawmakers now discussing gun safety bills again, the latest after the break. In the wake of two heartbreaking mass shootings, President Biden urging the Senate to pass two gun safety measures that have already cleared the House. However, as ABC's Mary Alice Parks reports, a Senate hearing showed yesterday that it may be easier said than done. At the White House, flags lowered to half staff to honor the victims of another mass casualty shooting in Boulder, Colorado. Hours after those same flags were raised after a solemn tribute to the eight killed in Atlanta. After the back-to-back -back horrific acts of gun violence, President Biden calling on Congress to act. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps 
that will save the lives in the future. Earlier this month, the House passed two major bipartisan gun safety bills. One that would expand background checks for all firearms, including private and online sales, and a second that would close what's known as the Charleston loophole, which allows some gun sales to go through before a required background check is complete. The Senate Majority Leader saying the Senate now will vote on a bill for universal background checks. The Senate is not going to hide. We're going to debate and address the epidemics of gun violence in this country. But even with polls showing a majority of Americans are in favor of some gun reforms, Senate Democrats face a steep road ahead to find 60 votes needed to move gun measures through. They would first have to get their own more conservative members on board. According to the Gun Violence Archive, more than 19,000 people died by gun violence in 2020 during the pandemic. Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell said yesterday he does not support the House bills, but is open to a robust discussion. There have been deep-seated philosophical differences between Republicans and Democrats about how to deal with gun violence. Facing such tough odds on Capitol Hill, the White House said yesterday the president is looking into the possibility of using executive actions to promote gun safety, but did not get into specifics. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. Outside with Lycan, we had that big old thunderstorm roll through, drop some hail and that uh, what EF1 tornado the other night. Now we might have some more of that coming our way. Tis the season. Uh, oh. We are very much into severe weather season now. And yes, we do have some chances for storms tonight. Not everybody is going to get rain, but there is another shot, especially up in the hill country, places that already dealt with some severe weather. We could see that again tonight. The aquifer, it is up one tenth of a foot to 659.2 in your pollen count. We have moderate counts of mold. Everything else is low. So these numbers coming down a little bit. That's good news. But dust showed up, which probably is left over from yesterday. Uh, we're going to talk about that severe weather potential now. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Woke up this morning and walked outside thinking it was going to be really okay. And it was just like getting hit in the face with a wet blanket. Mm -hmm. So much humidity out there. It came in quick too. I mean, we had two points that were really relatively dry like around midnight and then boom, the moisture came in, came in quick, helped create some fog and drizzle and it's going to set the stage for potentially a few storms this afternoon. I want to show you the time lapse. This tells you the story right here. This was around 6 a.m. this morning. A little bit of cloud cover, no big deal. And then watch the fog roll in. Boom, right there, drizzle. It's been a little damp since then. We're starting to see some breaks now, though, and temperatures, once we do see some breaks, will start to really race upward. 63 right now. Dew point is still high at 61 east early winds at about 11 miles per hour. You can see the cloud cover across Bear County still there. We're still underneath a, a nice cloud deck, but some breaks out near Hondo, Kerrville. Sun's trying to break out around Pleasanton as well. Temperature-wise, 70 in Castroville, 65 Port SA, 61 at Randolph. But where we are seeing some sun up to 74 now in Hondo. And we look out west, and the numbers are really warm now. 79 Carrizo Springs, 82 Cotula, 77 in Del Rio. And I think that we'll continue to see these clouds erode a little bit. So some sun this afternoon, and dew points are way up there in the low 60s. Again, that moisture surge was impressive. We've even got two points in the 70s now down along the coast. And we'll zoom out some. And you can see North Texas is somewhat dry, but this moisture is trying to work north. That's running into a storm system that's coming in out of the west. We've also got a dry line in play here. So a lot to look at. And this is what's going to help to give us some thunderstorms later today. You can already see there's a little bit of development. And by the way, there's some snow on the back side of this. So places like Amarillo getting some snow out of this system, another dynamic spring like system. And we can kind of pick up on where these boundaries are. You can see a boundary right there. So that's one I want to watch as we get into the afternoon as that sweeps east that could kick up some storms. And then as the main system moves in tonight, and we get some more energy coming in, there will be another round of thunderstorms, I think. So the chance of severe weather, we've got now a, an enhanced risk, which this was added just within the last hour. Waco up to east of Dallas. So that's where the biggest risk for severe weather will be tonight, this evening and tonight. But it does extend down towards Fredericksburg. We also now have a slight risk that uh, covers the hill country. 
San Antonio in a marginal risk. So it's really the hill country that we're going to watch pretty closely as we get into the evening hours and overnight hours. As we look at the computer model here, this shows around 8 o'clock, does show some isolated storms trying to pop up. We'll watch the radar. But as we get into tonight, that's when the better chance of rain arrives. This is around midnight. We've got storms trying to develop Rock Springs Junction over to Fredericksburg. These storms will have the potential to be strong to severe gusty winds, hail being the main threats. That works its way east. Notice the bulk of the activity, according to this model, stays north of San Antonio. We'll see. I'm not going to rule it out, though, here in town. We still can get a couple storms. But if you're up around Curvo, Fredericksburg, New Braunfels, Austin, your chances are a little bit higher of seeing some of this activity. By tomorrow morning, it moves out. We're getting clearing. Most of Thursday is going to be sunny and, and nice and drier, and temperatures will be uh, fairly warm. So the forecast for today will go 20% chance of rain across the board until we get into this evening. We'll up that to a 30% chance, and then overnight, we'll go up to a 40% chance midnight to 2 a.m. as some of that activity comes in from the west. Tomorrow, clearing 81, 85 Friday, and then more clouds and moisture return this weekend. We will have more rain chances by Sunday into Monday, guys. All right, at least we're getting a little rain. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's Baylor Bears women or mm -hmm. men. We're talking about Baylor every day, and this time it's the women. So. Yeah, I good. mean, they're both looking good so far, yeah. the men and women in the NCAA national championships that are going on. But right now we're going to talk a little bit about the NBA. The Spurs taking on the Clippers tonight. And this after the Spurs lost a tough one to the Hornets a couple nights ago. And Russell Wilson was hanging out at the Convocation Center last night, cheering on Stanford. We'll tell you why coming up. I mean, the schedule is, is crazy, but Ain't a lot of time to sulk about it. We just got to recover and get back right at it. Uh, we got two tough ones coming up with LA. So um, we can't really sulk too much about it. We just got to move on and, and go get these next ones. After a tough loss, open their homestand. Derek White and the Spurs are now focused on the LA Clippers tonight in Big Board Sports. Spurs open their nine game homestand Monday night by falling to the Charlotte Hornets 100 to 97. It's not uncommon for a team to lose their first home game back following a long road trip. I mean, it happens around the league all the time. DeMar DeRozan at 28 points. Derek White added 21 for the Spurs in that contest. The Spurs tied the game at 93 with 145 left, following a three-pointer by White and a three-point play by DeRozan. Then Terry Rozier hit a step-back 27-footer to give the Hornets the lead. They would not relinquish again. White was asked with limited fans in attendance, is there really a home advantage? It'll definitely help a little bit. I mean, honestly, not as much as if it was sold out and everything, but um, just having that little bit of extra support, um, I think it will definitely help a little bit get that little home court feel back. Yeah, 100%. You, you can feel it um, on both ends, whether we're on the road or whether at home, and you enjoy it, you know, playing in front of fans and, and being able to um, feed off the fans at home and, and on the road be able to, you know, suck the air out of, out of the gym, um, you know, when, when you get to play that, that right way. So um, I think so. I think there's going to be huge advantages now that, that fans are coming back. Spurs will face the L.A. Clippers tonight at 7.30. Rudy Gay is out with left foot soreness, and Lonnie Walker IV will sit with right wrist soreness. Turning to the NCAA Women's Championship, Baylor handled Virginia Tech yesterday, 90-48 to in the second round, so they're into the Sweet 16 again. Alyssa Smith from East Central High School had a heck of a game with four block shots, 15 points and four rebounds. As a team, the Bears had 13 blocks to none for Va Tech, and Queen Egbo had seven denials. Wow. Moon Erson scored 21 points for the Lady Bears. Now, Baylor is number two in the Riverwalk region and will face Michigan in the Sweet 16. Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson at the Convocation Center last night to watch his sister Anna Wilson and Stanford play number eight Oklahoma State. Anna scored 11 points and made all three of her three-point attempts. Wagner great Keanu Williams scored 13 points for the Cardinal to go with four assists and two steals. Overall number one, Stanford wins this one 73-62 in the Alamo region advancing to the Sweet 16. If I had to say anything about it, I think that, uh, you know, this wasn't our team's best game. Um, statistically, it wasn't. Um, and just obviously, if you, if you were watching the game, it, it wasn't our best game. But, um, you know, obviously we know that. Um, I think for me and for the whole team, um, we know that we have so much more to give. 
and we're really excited for the next opportunity to go out there and play. And we're lucky that we have another opportunity to go out there and play. Um, and I think that all of us, we, we just want to keep winning. Stanford will play the winner of the Missouri State Wright State game scheduled for today at 2 p.m. And what I found interesting and kind of cool is um, Russell Wilson was sitting in front of Keanu Williams' parents. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they would turn and bump each other's Dude. fist a couple times. So, wow. yeah, that was pretty neat. Just regular fans. Absolutely. <laughs> Gotta love that. Well, he'll have to stick around a while. Though. I hope so. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, Larry, thanks. The push to get more people vaccinated continues, but will drug companies be able to keep up with the growing demand? Details in the next half hour. Chronic inflammation. It can be painful or make you tired, and it's triggered by what you eat. Coming up new today at 5, 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris tells how to fight inflammation with food and get your health back on track. The investigation continuing into that deadly mass shooting in Colorado this afternoon. We're now learning more about the 10 people that gunman killed on Monday afternoon at a grocery store in Boulder. The 21 year old suspected gunman still in custody. ABC's Faith Abubi has the latest. Chilling new details about the nightmare that unfolded at this Boulder supermarket for nearly an hour Monday. According to the arrest affidavit, the accused killer methodically marched through the store and parking lot where witnesses say he shot an elderly man, then stood over him and shot multiple additional times. One shopper live streaming the chaos inside. Guys, we got people down inside King Supers. There's among the thousands watching, the family of store manager Ricky Olds. We're watching it on my phone as the police are, are just getting there. And, you know, we're horrified. Authorities later confirming their fears that the 25-year-old was killed, along with nine others, including 20-year-old Denny Stong, who also worked at the store. Suzanne Fountain, remembered as a kind and gifted actress. The oldest victim, 65-year-old Jody Waters, was a loving grandmother. You could just feel like the love pouring out of her and coming into you. And Boulder police officer Eric Talley, a father of seven, shot as he headed towards the gunman. My son gave his life to save those people at the King Savers. He gave it all. And the hate still continues. Oh God. The gunman, identified by police as 21-year-old Ahmad Alaliwi Alisa, described by former classmates as pleasant with a hair-trigger temper. They tell the Denver Post he once threatened to kill his peers. Investigators are also looking into whether Alisa suffered from mental health issues and are searching through social media posts, including one on Facebook in which someone identified as Alisa claims he was mistreated because he was a Muslim. And police say after the suspect surrendered here, he refused to answer their questions. He is expected in court tomorrow. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Boulder, Colorado. Fencing installed around the U.S. Capitol after the violent security breach back in January being scaled back. Capitol Police tweeting all of the fencing surrounding the outer perimeter of the Capitol has now been taken down. The public will once again access the Capitol grounds, making way for the typical parade of joggers, bicyclists, and other visitors in the popular green space. Last year, the COVID-19 pandemic shook the lives of everyone. And today, a year later, we're still dealing with the damage. From burned out medical staff to frustration over vaccine supplies, U.S. hospitals are in a bit of shambles. That's according to a new report from the Department of Health and Human Services Inspector General. Research shows that the challenges in U.S. hospitals are largely related to the ongoing intensity of having to deal with COVID for our total year. Hospitals reporting long hours, more shifts, time away from family, and increased responsibilities caused by the pandemic. It has left staff exhausted, mentally fatigued, and sometimes experiencing possible PTSD. The report surveyed more than 300 hospitals across the country in late February on how the coronavirus pandemic has affected them. The government pushing to get as many people vaccinated as possible, but will suppliers be able to meet that demand? ABC's Stephanie Ramos has the story for us. Much of New York State's allotment of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was brought right here to Yankee Stadium. And now with the federal government planning to ship out 27 million doses this week, more people across the country will be able to get that shot. 
Officials in the Biden administration, however, are not confident that Johnson & Johnson will meet its self-imposed deadline to deliver 20 million COVID vaccines by the end of March, despite the company saying they can deliver. Now, this comes after AstraZeneca released promising results of its U.S. vaccine trial. But just hours later, the National Institutes of Health questioning the findings, saying the company may have included outdated information. AstraZeneca reporting its vaccine was 79% effective at preventing symptomatic disease and 100% effective at preventing severe disease and hospitalization. The company acknowledging those numbers were based on data through mid-February and is now promising to turn over newer data within 48 hours. 28 states have announced plans to green light the vaccine for all residents 16 and older, and those shots cannot come fast enough. COVID cases increasing in 16 states by nearly 10% just this past week. And there is some good news in the treatment for COVID. Regeneron says data from their trial shows its treatment for COVID cuts the risk of hospitalization and death by 70% when given early on in infection. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, New York. Live look outside with live cam. Ugh, is it raining out there? I mean, it? it is so dark. What is that? That's Murky. Is that Murky? humidity? There is a little bit of fog, guys, actually still holding on from this morning. Not necessarily at the airport, but we're seeing that on the east side of San Antonio. So just a heads up. Visibility should improve and we're starting to see clouds break up some. So I do expect that we'll get at least a little bit of sun this afternoon. Uh, let's look at the visibility real quick and I'll show you that Randolph still reporting uh, visibility of about three quarters of a mile, two and a half miles in New Braunfels. So that's still sort of a corridor there where the fog is hanging on. Otherwise, everyone else has cleared up. As we look at temperatures, 64 degrees, the airport still underneath clouds where we are seeing the sun temperatures in the 70s and 80s, now 82 in Catula, 79 Carrizo Springs, 69 right now in Kerrville. And you can see the cloud cover still pretty thick right over Bear County, but there are some breaks trying to work their way in, and the clouds are trying to thin out a little bit uh, right over San Antonio as well. Forecast for today gives us about a 20% chance for shower or storm going into this evening. We'll top out close to 80, and then rain chances increase overnight. There could be a couple strong storms, especially in the Hill Country. We'll take another look at that severe weather risk coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Still ahead, Regal Theaters reopening and just in time. Find out when you can finally take a break from all that streaming. After the break, Disney World trying something new, facial recognition technology. What you need to know before your next trip. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Canadians rejoice. Chipotle is announcing plans to open eight new locations in the country later this year. The news pretty big for Canada, which hasn't seen a new Chipotle location open up in over three years. This comes as the chain continues to ramp up its international expansion. The first of the restaurants will debut in Surrey, British Columbia on March the 30th. Meanwhile, Taco Bell getting a makeover as the fast food chain planning to reimagine their restaurants. They're going to double down on some of the major trends we saw during the pandemic. The chain will expand their Go Mobile concept that they introduced last year. They also plan to feature smaller dining rooms and dual drive through lanes. Restaurants will also have more digital kiosks in addition to in-store staff taking orders. And Robinhood has confidentially filed for an IPO with the SEC. It was previously reported that Robinhood was planning to file for an IPO this month with plans to trade over at the NASDAQ. The company already has had a crazy year, seeing new customers rush to their platform during the Reddit-led rally with GameStop. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. From Buckingham Palace to the corner store, Prince Harry, or rather corner office, Prince Harry now the chief impact officer at a San Francisco-based tech company. It's called Better Up. The Duke of Sussex told the Wall Street Journal that he plans to impact people's lives through proactive coaching. Better Up markets itself as a custom coaching company that uses artificial intelligence and behavioral science. Does that mean some of its clients can request the prince as their personal coach? 
Eh, probably not, but it's almost impossible to say what his daily responsibilities are. The profile page on the company's website only talks about what Prince Harry has done in the past. Disney testing out new facial recognition technology. The park rolled out its test system yesterday at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom in Florida. Disney says it's looking for ways to focus on more touchless experiences in the parks. The technology converts, or converts, converts? Converts is right. Yeah, a guest face and gives it a unique number ID, tying it to your admission ticket. The test is optional and will be in place for at least 30 days. Disney says it'll make every effort to secure the confidentiality of guests' information. Actually, in that case, it would be converts. Sorry. Good news for people who prefer to watch their movies on the big screen. Regal Cinemas reopening its U.S. theaters next month, about a half year after they had to shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Senna World Group CEO, Regal's parent company, says they're going to be able to make a profit now that capacity restrictions are expanding to at least 50 percent. The reopening coincides with a pair of major debuts. Look at this. Godzilla versus Kong. Who doesn't want to see that? And Mortal Kombat, both of which are scheduled to come out in April. Outside with live camera, we're going to convert or convert something. We're going to convert it. <laughs> we're going to convert it. We're convert gonna... the fog into sunshine. Yeah, we're going to yeah. convert the moisture into rain, I hope. That's what we really need. We need some more rain. Not severe weather, but rain. Uh, there is a chance as we get into tonight. 64 degrees, the uh, high so far today, but I expect that number will jump up quite a bit once we get a little bit of sun. 54 the low this morning. Averages are 76 and 53. Records are 94 and 28. We've got some warm weather on the way. In fact, we'll be in the 80s next couple days. And again, we do have that chance for storms coming up a little bit later today. We'll take a look at the forecast coming up. The votes are in and there's a new Cadbury bunny, but it's not a bunny. For the first time ever, it's an amphibian who is inheriting the bunny ears. Betty, the Australian white tree frog, will represent Cadbury this year. She'll also star in the Clucking Bunny commercial. That's coming up soon. Betty's already featured Bye. in a brief sneak peek. This is Betty's first Easter at less than a year old. <laughs> That's, uh, she's already a natural at hopping, right? It's a frog. Yeah, Betty beat out 12,000 other entries, including a donkey, a miniature horse, and a goat, in addition to Starring in the commercial, Betty will get a $5,000 cash prize. Ribbit. I don't know. Nah, no, no. You can't have a frog, a bunny. It hops at least. Cadbury. The pig didn't hop. That's true. <laughs> didn't think about that. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Justin. Backing me up. How Good hard is it going to be to dress the frog? Get the stuff on the frog. The well, bunny they ears did. And yeah, they made it happen. They made it happen. A little tiny, little teeny you tiny You know, ears. crafting is, is a very specialized profession. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not down with that frog, sorry. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the uh, cloud cover. It is starting to thin out a little bit. So we've been in the clouds all morning long and dealing with some fog. That is uh, starting to go away. And uh, we'll see maybe a little bit of sun this afternoon. Temperatures we will spot will respond accordingly as we look across the state. You'll notice there's some snow up there across Amarillo. It's cold, cold enough for snow. And uh, this is a, another dynamic spring like system that are moving be moving across Texas. Not only will it bring some severe weather here, but once it moves east of us, there's going to be a lot of severe weather across the southeastern states coming up tomorrow. So this is a, another busy weather scenario. We're watching a boundary here. As we get into the afternoon and that pushes east, runs into some of that moisture, we could get some storms going. If we do, they would have the potential to be severe. And then as we get some more energy coming out of Mexico tonight, there will be another round of showers and storms. Here's our storm system now. Warm front moving north. That brought in the moisture this morning, along with some drizzle and fog. And we're still seeing a little bit of that. As far as the chance for severe weather, here is the corridor for that. This area in orange is your enhanced risk. So on a scale of one to five, this is about a three. The yellow portion is a slight risk, and then San Antonio sits in a marginal risk. Threats are going to be large hail and damaging winds. Uh, those are the big two. And Kerrville, Junction, Rock Springs, Fredericksburg, that's the area that we'll be watching closely tonight. But that's not to say San Antonio couldn't see a storm or two as well. As we look outside right now, 
Temperature is sitting at 64. Easterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. Still cloudy at the airport, but seeing some peaks of sun around Pleasanton, where it's 73, 74 Hondo, 63 New Braunfels, 60 up there in comfort with cloudy skies there. And we're in the low 80s already with plenty of sun as you get down towards Creosote Springs and Katua. Dew point tracker shows we've got thick humidity right now. Dew points in the mid 60s. Those will drop off. We'll get some dry air Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday will be great days, but the moisture comes back this weekend and that could lead to a few more showers and storms by the time we get into late Saturday, but more so it looks like on Sunday. Here's what our computer model is showing. As we get into say seven, eight o'clock, this does show a few isolated storms. Again, the favorite area is going to be the hill country. As we get into tonight, we'll see more showers and storms. This is around midnight. Fredericksburg Junction, Rock Springs, all looking at the potential for some of these storms to become strong, and then they'll work their way towards San Antonio. We could get clipped by some of this, and there's a decent chance that we'll at least get maybe a little bit of rain out of this. By 3 a.m., a lot of this is starting to move east, and then by tomorrow morning, it's out of here, and we're back in the sun tomorrow and again on Friday. Here's what the uh, hourly planner looks like. 79, close to 80 by 6 o'clock, 20% chance of rain, 30% chance by 8 o'clock, and then tonight we'll call for a 40% chance of showers and storms, 10 p.m. through about 2 a.m. or so. And then tomorrow, sunny and 81. 85 Friday, slight chance of a stray storm Saturday, although I think our better chance is probably on Sunday with a frontal battery. And then another slight chance showing up on Monday as well. We'll be right back. did not tip off their historic nine game homestand the way they wanted by losing to an undermanned Charlotte Hornets Monday night, 100 to 97. So tonight they'll look to get back into the win column against the LA Clippers. So just how important is this homestand when you consider after this one is over with, most of the Spurs remaining games will be on the road. When you look at the standings, every game is important. Um, there's a bunch of teams all jumbled up in between couple games, so um, home, away, all games are going to be important. First came back after a long road trip uh, and tough road trip. Um, and, and you can see the cobwebs there. But, you know, in, in saying that, um, you know, we, we've been always harping on the fact of pulling 48 minutes together. And even the games that we won um, on the road, you know, they, they still weren't that 48 minutes. And that was just another example of it. Spurs and Clippers will go tonight at 7.30. Rudy Gay is out with left foot soreness, and Lonnie Walker IV is out because he's dealing with right wrist soreness. <laughs> the women's big dance, number six in the hemisphere region, Texas will take on number three UCLA tonight at eight with the winner advancing to the Sweet 16. That's after they beat 11th seeded Bradley 81-62 on Monday. The Horns were led by Charlie Collier, but she was the target of some unwanted overrated chance in the fourth quarter. That's about as classless as any adult could be. That's, that's going to do that to a kid, to a young person playing. A kid. This, these aren't pros. You ain't paying $100 to come into these games. So standing up there and chanting that, that was as classless as the, what I heard in our semifinal game in the Big 12 tournament. Changing gears to Longhorns football, the injury-plagued college career of wide receiver Jake Smith took another setback when he apparently broke his foot on the first day of spring workouts. This will, of course, end his participation in spring workouts, and now we just wait to see how long it will take to heal and if he will be available for fall camp. Smith, now in his junior season, had a very promising future starting in the freshman year when he was the main backup for starter Devin Duvernay and was expected to have a major role in the 2020 season, but he injured his hamstring in fall camp last year and missed the first two games of the season. But after returning against TCU, he aggravated his injury and he never played a key role again. This year, he was supposed to be his breakout season until now. So how has Steve Sarkeesian, in his first season as head coach of Texas, changed the way the Horns are practicing? We definitely have a lot of reps. Um, there's not a lot of standing around. Um, we two spot a lot of our drills uh, so that everybody's active in practice. Um, we try to minimize the time that we're actually on the field. Um, but by doing the time on the field, that means, you know, we got multiple things going on at one time. And by doing that, that minimizes some of the rest time that guys would normally have in practice. Uh, but it gets them ready for what games should be like. 
And I'll tell you, Jake Smith is certainly very talented. You just got to feel bad he can't stay healthy. Setback for him and for the Longhorns in general and for Sarkeesian since this is his yep. first year out there. Huh? It is. All right, Larry, thank you very much. All right, it's time for SA Live. Yep. Yes. We're talking twang and not a southern twang either. <laughs> yes, this will help you, especially over maybe Easter weekend yep. when you want to save some time, but still have some great food and drinks. Yep, uh, Chef Edward Villarreal is here and it's not just beer salt, but you're making a cocktail with yes, that, right? That's right, and this Make is easy, right? bit. Yeah, twang is very, very versatile. We're gonna be making a cocktail over there, a little uh, Campanchana, and then we're going to be doing a jicama shrimp taco. Okay. okay, and we're going to be using that same thing in the cocktail as part of the cocktail sauce on the shrimp. That's and right. boy, oh boy, all the different things that you can do with this and some of the marinades, everything else. Oh, we are going to be doing good today. Speaking of food, hot joy. How about some noodles? Jen is out there. What's going on, Jen? That's right, we're celebrating National Noodle Month, so we had to come to Hot Joy. They're known for their ramen, but hey, it's a Wing Wednesday here. Take a look at these. This is a customer favorite, and there's a secret ingredient in the batter. I'll give you a hint. Something to do with the cocktails. We're also gonna make those too. Stay with us. I hope she brings some of those wings over here. Hey, speaking of Easter's right around the corner, Goodwill. Don't forget about shopping for your Easter basket over there at Goodwill. You can find all sorts of great stuff. And don't forget about the fashion you can find there. You can get the whole family looking their Easter best. And it's kind of like a treasure hunt every, you know, every time you go and you can find some really great stuff. And celebrating birthdays, hey, especially this past year, you know, you really want to make it special for the kids. We have a great way to celebrate virtual birthdays and encourage maybe some careers in the medical profession. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live, so stick around.